No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so um, since this is an unofficial start, I won't do the official uh, intro. I'll give that seven minutes or something, right? But yeah, so yeah. so see what, what we were just talking about. I think that that yeah. there's so much in Jeet Kune Do and to Jeet Kune Do that is dichotomous, you see? So mm -hmm. if you're in a position where your Jeet Kune Do is you're a hobbyist Jeet Kune Do person, right? Mm -hmm. Versus full-time professional or what have you. I think there is too much simplistic thinking about that. As in, well, if you're a hobbyist, you don't have to focus on quality and integrity and what have you, because you're not doing it to pay the bills, right? Or to provide you know, mm. a future for yourself and your family or whatever, right? Then right. on the other hand, conversely, people's idea is, well, if you're teaching for money, you automatically are compromising. You are automatically selling out. You are automatically watering down your Jeet Kune Do in order to make a buck. And those are the only two types of thinking i come in and i go no that's never jeet Kune Do is never a or b jeet Kune Do is always right. ab or ba right oh which reminds me <laughs> which reminds me you know if you do play with the words sifu and guru the only way to have it make sense is sifuro because you can't do gufu no, you cannot. Which <laughs> right. is why I have that. Why I have that Instagram account and that uh, YouTube account as Sifu. Yeah. Right? That mm -hmm. goofu would be terrible. <laughs> it would be. It would be. That, and I also wanted to prioritize the the Sifu portion of it. I was like, well, you know, like, because because Do was my main reason into going into martial arts. So I didn't yeah. want to like, st like start it with with Guru. And again, it, it sounds That's weird. That's interesting because, you know, a lot of people do not make any kind of consideration or or differentiation or or what have you. They don't. They absolutely don't. And I... I Between wonder, the titles? Yeah. I wonder how come. Look at how many people refer to Dan and Asano, right, as Guru Dan as guru. or Guru Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Now, I imagine, I imagine... It's because they came along um, at a time when, uh, um, or maybe they came along because of Filipino martial arts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right. But I'm certainly not one of those people. You know, so right. like he teases me all the time. Like if he's going to autograph something for me, he's like, okay, how do you want me to, how, how do you want me to sign it? <laughs> Right. I'm like, you know how. <laughs> right. But yeah, but he, he, play, he plays. And, and so sometimes I wonder if people think that guru is actually like a Jeet Kune Do term. Because, there, because there's absolutely no that. reason. There's absolutely no reason. to. So let, let me let me pick somebody. Uh, no, let me not pick anybody because I, I don't know why people do what they do. Right. I just know why I do what I do and sometimes not even. Right. OK, so let me check and see if anybody chimed in early with us. Yes, they did. All right. Terry Valor's here. Pedro Rodriguez. Hey, Pedro, is it raining up by you, too? We can't get man. It's flooding like crazy here in, in Miami. Mark Black is here. Bo Jackson. I don't know if the rain got all the way up to. Um, up to Tallahassee, Billy Brown. Good to see you. I forget what what do, what part of what part of Florida is Billy in again? He's like Orlando or something. Do you, do you remember? Anyhow, good to remember. see you guys. Right. Okay. So um, for those of you who are chiming in, this is uh, Jeet Kune Do Dialogues episode number. I, I made a mistake on it. I I think I I put it down as two twenty three. 
right? Yeah. And then I yeah, saw, I saw yeah, that. No, that was the early one, right? Yeah. So this is episode <laughs> 226, a repeat reverse dialogue with um, Russell Dulai. Okay. Make sure you all get it right. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, uh, if you're joining us, uh, you guys know the deal. Um, say where you're logging in from, hit the like button. Feel free to continue doing so throughout the dialogue. If you're catching the simulcast over on the YouTube, please be sure to like, uh, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell as well. If you want to support the program, please visit jkdrebel.com. Click on the Rebel Gear link, and that's where you'll see stuff like this. The This is a JKD Rebel uh, um, original. The JKD Notables coffee mug. Actually, I got mine right here. How you like me now? Hey, right. very nice. Coffee mug, t-shirt, uh, long sleeve, short sleeve, sweatshirt, hoodie, all that good stuff. But of course, the best thing you can do is to share this video and spread the word about the Jeet Kune Do dialogues. All right, so, we, so, so, you, you, you what, what's your take on what I was just telling you about, like how people approach this whole hobbyist versus um, professional thing? Uh, I don't. <laughs> Oh, I'm supposed to be asking you some controversial questions, sir. Oh, so, um, well, skip that. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, and if I think if you're you're teaching for money, right, or if you're getting paid to teach, I should say, um, that's that's it's not selling out. It's just it's just not right because you're you're providing a service, right? And if you are if you're providing a quality service. And, and you're providing quality instruction, you should be uh, paid for that, right? Like, why Why would you not? There's nothing, there's like z no other industry where you would say, oh, you're doing that for money, you're selling out. You know, that's, yeah. that's foolish. Why could yeah. I not, as a martial arts professional, regardless of my art, teach for money without being called a sellout? I think that's... <sighs> It's I'll give you I'll give you I'll give you another aspect stupid. to think about, right? I'll give you another okay. aspect to think about. Because you you talked about providing a service, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's very important. Yes, that's very important because being of service to people is is a, is a glorious thing that one human being can do to and for another. The other thing that you should consider <clears throat> is the value that you bring by what you teach, by what you impart. You see, so if we go back to somebody saying, oh, like you said, you said, uh, you know, we, we're the only profession. So like somebody, nobody would say to a, a physician, you know, oh, right. you're, you're, you're right. You're, you're a surgeon and you get paid to be a surgeon. You're a sellout. But, and people will try to count to that by talking about how well surgeons are indispensable. Martial mm -hmm. art instructors are not indispensable. Well, not that's not true you see mm -hmm. because what because i mean think think of think of all the crime and violence that we have around the world if mm -hmm. martial art instructors um provide people with an opportunity to not be a victim to not become a victim hey did you see did you see the cop that did a takedown on the woman um uh, at the biden the biden thing no like I she not. like she was protesting the biden procession or something and this cop right grabs her and they stumble of course like people do they fall to the ground and he's in and he's in like kissing gatami right and okay. she reaches okay, yeah. up she reaches up with her left hand and rips off his 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 uh his cap right and i'm just thinking if she knew anything right if she knew, <laughs> her, instincts, her instincts were perfect right to start countering this this guy right and i'm just thinking man come on come on you gotta <laughs> take this woman down hard to the asphalt right over a percent anyhow right if it's, it's funny see if you can find the clip it, it's it's uh, it's it's kind of, i was i was just I was I'm waiting sure I for him. I was waiting for him to put her in like a V arm lock from kissing and Tommy and what have you. You know, I was like, <laughs> you're right there, right? 
Right? All you do is <laughs> switch the bass and <laughs> oh man, it was it, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. Anyhow, so um, so yeah, so value, that's something that we have to keep uppermost in, in our minds. The value that we bring um with with what we do. Does that make yeah. sense? Yes. Right? Okay. So mm -hmm. yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, I'm just making sure of something. Else. All right, so what do you got okay. for me? Uh, well, before we start, um, I just want to point out that I am in single single parent mode. My wife is on the other side of the pond, right? She's deployed. Um, so okay. if my kids run in here, I have to take care of them. <laughs> I'm just okay. saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> that was like, oh, Russell's so unprofessional. Well, yeah, maybe, but I also have, I'm also responsible for two little humans, right? So I've, ah, I've got to make go. sure. There yeah. you go. But um, so, so if that happens, and if you hear any screaming in the background, I can almost guarantee that they are okay. That is just how they are. Right. Okay. Now. So, so you, if, if you want, if you want to benefit from my expertise in raising children, right, there are two uh, there are two indispensable items that you must have, rope and duct tape. Mm, yeah, I don't want bad advice. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My, the two indispensable items are a keen eye and a sure foot. All right, that's that's all you need. Ah, there you okay, go. there you go. Yeah. Take that information. I love, I love, I love the picture of a, a family that, that trains together Right. For those of you who don't know, I was I, I posted a picture on my personal Facebook. My kids and I were brushing teeth after um after training. So <laughs> friend requests me and you can see it, right? Now, anyway. Uh to start, I've got two silly questions for you just to break the ice, although yeah. we've certainly done that already for like 10 minutes. I think <laughs> I started a little early. So we we we've all heard of of Hans Island, and if you haven't, you know, shame on you. Just turn off the the podcast now. Go watch Enter the Dragon. Um, but let's say you're Mr. Braithwaite, right? You have to take, or you have to assemble from the Jeet Kune Do world, a Lee, a Roper, and a Williams to go over to Hans Island. I know he didn't didn't assemble Roper and Williams, but. Mm -hmm. You have to assemble a trio of Jeet Kune Do people today, not people in their prime, just people today. Who are you sending over? Um, I get three. I get three people. Yes. Well. Okay, Cass Magda, Paul Vunak, and. Um, Cameron Rico or Dave Lear. Okay, that's a good list. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. Conversely. Yeah. I mean, if you if you if you want people if you want people who can get the job done. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely. Okay. Right. The, yeah. yeah. Right now, if you give me more options, I'll put I'll put more people in. But in terms of, um, you know, I mean, because you I can't I can't leave out like Chris Kent can get the job done. Um, mm -hmm. Michael Marcellus Brown can get the job done, right? But if you go, okay, so who who comes to mind? Well, you know, I have I have right. a, a right. I mean, I'm I'm closer to Cass than than anybody else. Um, I'm not saying I'm close. Clo I'm not saying I'm. I'm saying, okay, let me rephrase this correctly. You're not the closest to Cass. You are right, <laughs> right. Yeah. But of of the people who 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 I met in '83 when when I when I came came on board, right? Mm -hmm. Cass is the one that that I, that I have the closest relationship with. Okay. Now for very convers good reasons. Okay. Conversely, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you are Han. All right. Who are your Bolo and O'Hara? I am Han. Yes. Who is my Bolo and? Uh, Bob Bremer Ooh. is is my Forcer. But yeah. <laughs> right? Bob Bob Bremer is my um is 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 my my O'Hara and um 
So I gotta get. Does he have to? Does the Bolo character have to have the same attributes as as uh, Yang Zi? Uh, we'll say no, cause oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if, if he had to, say, if he had to, it would be uh, mm -hmm. Nathan. It would be Nathan Jung. Okay, right, but um, mm -hmm. but if it's uh, let me think. Oh. Hmm. These are just icebreaker questions. They're not that yeah. serious. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if I could clone Bob Bremer, right? There you and go. make him play but because 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 O'Hara and Bolo were both enforcers, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So if I could clone Bob Bremer, I'd I'd be uh hey Jeremy Lynch. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because yeah. Jeremy Lynch is um no, I, I think not enough. Not enough people know enough about, look, not enough people know enough about many people in the JKD world, mm -hmm. you know, despite my best efforts over the past four years, right? I still cannot uncover everybody and put everybody out there on a regular and, and consistent basis, but I will keep doing what I'm doing. I will keep trying. So... Um, but yeah, so th yeah, those, so those are my people: Cass Magda, Bob, Bob Bremer, um, um, Michael Brown, uh, Cameron Rico, Dave Lear, Del Pollard, the 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 recently mm -hmm. deceased Del Pollard. Um, yeah. Cass, Cass Cass uses it. Del Del was another one of those. Look, Tim Cordoza, right? I mean, there's so look, there's so many people. There's so many people mm -hmm. from the old days that people don't know about right like okay we mm -hmm. we tend we see blaze loom every once in a while mm -hmm. right okay so people know ab about about him but they don't know about jeff chun his training partner right for a long time you, you know what i mean i don't yeah so. <laughs> it, it, it's it's just there's 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 so many there's so many people Man. Yeah. Yeah, we we if if I if I did a compilation of names, right, and then just started dropping mm -hmm. names from the seventies and the eighties, like if I could compile my own list or what have you. See, because it's not just the LA guys and gals. Mm -hmm. You see, because there's seventies and eighties people from outside of LA, right? Raymond Crow from Texas. Raymond Crow started going out to the Kali Academy in the 1970s. You see, but he's not mm -hmm. known necessarily um, around the world, let's say. Right, right. Rick Fay, like I just talked about Rick Fay. Um, I think Rick is Rick in terms of um, when he started, right? I think that Rick is as senior mm -hmm. as chronologically as senior as many of the LA guys. You know? So right. Is what it is. All right? Yeah. Sure. So that's my crew. All right. And I would I would yeah, I would just sit back and not get involved. You just sit <laughs> back and enjoy question. the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get impaled on that spear. Anyway, yeah. Oh, uh, hashtag spoiler alert, right? But I'm pretty sure everyone used... who's watching has seen Enter the Dragon. So, go ahead. We could only hope so. No, I use that imagery of um, being impaled on the spear in uh, in a private lesson uh, today, explaining to somebody how how to hit with forward energy while moving backward. Right, so that as somebody's coming in on you and you're moving back, but you still hit forward, so they end up mm -hmm. impaling themselves right on your spear. Right, there you go. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's clever. That's clever. That's, oh, yeah, that's that, a good yeah. way to look at it, man. That's yeah, that's what I was doing at 9 30 this morning. <laughs> ah, there you go. What was I doing? That's not important, anyway. <laughs> All right, so I have uh. I do have little ones. I'm making sure they're well. They're they're fairly self-sufficient now, so it's not nice. it's not too bad nice. in the mornings. 
Nice. Um, now, uh, follow-up questions. Um, mm -hmm. So in May, we we were talking about what you felt some of Jikindo's biggest assets were. And where you currently are, you said it was the philosophy, right? Now, conversely, what would you say, if any, are some of Jeet Kundo's biggest weaknesses? Well, so Jeet Kune Do in and of itself is nothing, possesses nothing. Right. It takes the human mm -hmm. beings to come along and animate the art. It, mm -hmm. it, it, actually, it takes the human beings to come along and animate the philosophy as well. So in and of itself, Jeet Kune Do is perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's another one of those situations, one of those um, um, proverbial situations, Russell, where when the humans get involved, that's when things start to fall apart. Yes. You see, right? So structurally, Jeet Kune Do doesn't lack for anything because inherent in the approach is exper research, experimentation, and development. That's mm -hmm. built in to the approach. So if you have that in your blueprint, if you have that in your template, as Bruce Lee does, mm -hmm. that's fairly genius because, because it means and it ended up being true. If you're no longer around as the founder, guess what? You have done the proverbial taught people how to fish and feed themselves, mm -hmm. right? Rather than giving them fish. So, so fortunately right. for us in the JKD world, Bruce Lee both gave fish and taught how to fish. And so to me, that's mm -hmm. an example of the kind of instructors that we should be. Yes, you do give your students fish, what Inasana would call experiences. So the drills in class are designed to provide experiences for your students. And from those experiences, they gain, um, they gain knowledge and, and skill. So, so yes, there are certain things. So, you know, if you have a curriculum, that curriculum is fish, but built into that curriculum should be, right? Mm -hmm. How to fish, Sir. you know? So like I said before, in the old days, I used to tease people, I can't believe it, but I used to, you know, I won't even mention it. Here's today, right? Mm -hmm. June 10th, 2022. I hope I've done a good enough job of teaching people how to fish because if Jennifer Connolly comes by and says, Dwight, I've been looking for you all my life. I'm gone. Y'all will not hear from me again. And by the way, she's the only reason to watch Top Gun, which I haven't done. But if I do, it'll be just to see her. OK. OK. I haven't seen it yet either. Yeah. Record. Yeah. I, but. you know, I, 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 um, I kind of fell out of of um, of the whole movie thing, even pre pre COVID, because Hollywood mm -hmm. just got real dumb. And um, in the old days here in Miami, even before I before I moved here, I used to fly up to Miami to go to the movies, and I was all about the foreign films and the independent. Like they created. IFC, the Independent Film Channel, they created that for mm -hmm. me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you keep them in business. Exactly. I used to spend so much money at at the the at the the cinema um, here here in my watching independent stuff. And so we had um, we had one, two, three, maybe maybe even four. No, you know what? No, maybe five or six um des destination cinemas for independent film for foreign film in miami mm -hmm. at one point right um it's it's I, I i i there's a concert this weekend so this weekend um chucho valdez and paquito de rivera are in town 
Um, this is not something I have kept up with, but one of the glorious things about Miami in the old days is that you could have a Latin jazz concert like that right next to um, um, Wynton Marsalis, right? And, and his classical jazz, right? Playing, playing at the, the James L. Knight Center, you know, and then you go down on 8th Street and, and you got people jamming there. You go over to Churchill's and you got you got rock people and, and you know, people jamming. And, and I haven't kept up with the scene because I'm too old for that stuff. Ha, ha, ha. No, I'm not. Right. But I, I just <laughs> lost interest in, in, in a lot of that stuff. But that was one of the glorious things about Miami that... Um, the, you, you know, you know how diversity is like a is like a um, um, a, a catchphrase now, right? You know, like all of a sudden, um, it, you have to have diversity, equity, and inclusion, or whatever it is, right? See, that's bogus because they're pretended. Miami was that automatically. You see, before it became politically correct to talk about that stuff and what have you, right? I was explaining to I was explaining to to somebody who was it anyhow I was explaining to somebody we have a new um, press secretary right Haitian girl okay true Miamians even adopted Miamians like me right when that happened we felt proud. Right. I'm not Haitian, but I'm Miami. Right. And so when when it, because I mean, you you lived there for a little bit, so you might be aware of the connection between Miami and, and Haiti. Right. So when that happened, even I felt proud. Now she's just got to make sure she does a good job, you know. Right. But <laughs> yeah, that's a different story. OK. Anyhow. So, yeah, that has nothing to do with Jeet Kune Do, does it? I mean, we can we can make it work. We can make it work. Hey, man. <laughs> so right. Okay. So, what was the question? <laughs> oh no, it was just uh, what would you say some of? Uh, it was for some of Jeet Kune Do's biggest weaknesses, but we've established yeah. Yeah. in and of no. itself. No, the there weaknesses aren't any. would the we no not in and of itself. The weaknesses would be Correct. what people put into it. So if you if you come, so here's a weakness, right? Dogma. That's a weakness, right? Mm -hmm. You bring that into Jeet Kune Do and you go, no, 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 no. Bruce, this, Bruce, that, Bruce, the other thing, Bruce, the next thing. Okay. Were you there when Bruce, <laughs> no, how the hell you know, the right? How the hell <laughs> you know? Okay. That's just you with your mind thinking this is how it should be this is how it must be or whatever right so you bring dogma i mean how could anybody read bruce lee's writings and be dogmatic in their approach to jeet Kune Do? makes no sense makes no sense mm -hmm. you're not you're not matching up at all you're not aligning at all with bruce lee if you're dogmatic in your approach no nah, no way no way right conversely though it doesn't mean that you go to an extreme in the other direction, right? Because you know where where some people say, "Oh, well, there are people out there like Dwight who say that anything can be Jeet Kune Do." I don't know when I ever said that, right? But you know, if right. somebody says, yeah, if somebody accuses me of that, I'll defend it, right? But no, of course not, because mm -hmm. it comes back to what it comes back to what you and I talked about in the beginning. Jeet Kune Do is never this or that; it's always somewhere in the middle running like hell to stay in balance that's what you can know mm -hmm. you know the 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 duck right on the surface of the water looking all placid and what have Calm. you right but then underneath the surface mm -hmm. this is what's going on that's that yes. that's how that's how you want to be that's how you want to present yourself to the world like oh he's pretty cool but you don't know man behind the scenes you know it's like when people say Oh, you make so and so look easy. Well, hell yeah, right? Because you train your ass off all the right. time. 
So Bruce Lee says, I do common things in an uncommon way, right? Why? Mm -hmm. Relentless pursuit of excellence. Yes, sir. That's how you end up there, you know? That's what I would mm -hmm. say if anybody was to ask me a question. Yeah. But they never do, so. But they never ask <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's why you have me today. Right? Yeah, but they never right. ask me anything. <laughs> All right. Well, that kind of puts a damper up on my follow-up question to that. So. Oh, the, the, the inherent weakness follow-up? Uh, e yeah, yeah, that's all right. What was it going to be? Or, oh, well, was how... What I've written down was, how do you think Jeet Kune Do, and interestingly enough, I wrote, and or its practitioners, mm -hmm. can man maintain those assets or refine those weaknesses? Yeah. But again, yeah. those weaknesses are inherent to the individual, since Jeet Kune Do is about the individual also, right? And right. Like we had just okay, touched see, on. That's very important, you know, right? The whole aspect of mm -hmm. how important is the individual to Jeet Kune Do. That's really, really important. And that's something that a lot of people, I think, don't either don't understand or don't pay mm -hmm. enough attention to. This is why. You, you, know, you know what annoys me? The way the statement Bruce Lee, I'll, I'll paraphrase it, I guess. Sure. Only Bruce Lee could do things a certain way, right? Everybody looks at that, or too many people, I shouldn't say everybody, too many people look at that mm -hmm. and they think, oh, okay, well, if Bruce Lee, if only Bruce Lee could do things a certain way, then I shouldn't even try to do it. That's ridiculous. Correct. Br Bruce Lee could do what Very he could ridiculous. do because Bruce Lee was who Bruce Lee was. Now you got to do the best job that you can do of what Bruce Lee was doing because you are who you are as well. It's not like, oh, well, uh, mm -hmm. well, Jeet Kune Do was just for Bruce because only he could do it the way he did it. Well, of course, only Bruce Lee could JKD in the Bruce Lee way because he's the only Bruce Lee. It doesn't mean that you right. go, oh, so I, I can. So, but, so when, so when Sifu Dan says, when Sifu Dan says that there were certain things in Jeet Kune Do that he could not do, right? Then of course, well, there, then you know you get all kinds of interpretations of what that statement means. You know what I mean? Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but but people don't understand. He's talking about the individual. Everybody's different. So even when we're doing the same things, when when I like when when you train with us, what was it? If we're going to train the sidekick on the kick shield, right? What was it that we used to talk about? Channel uh, Bruce, Lee. Bruce Yep. Aye. And Way of the Dragon. Right. You see? You channel Bruce Lee. Okay. So now, who's going to end up looking like him? Nobody. But Me. using that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. No, I'm Nobody's joking. I'm not, right? I'm not that conceited. I'm not that right? conceited. But, but using that imagery, to enhance your performance. That's what I'm talking about. But it's still going to be a, an individualistic thing. Mm -hmm. You see? So that's very, that's very, very important. It, and and mm -hmm. what's important too is having the courage to believe in your own conclusions, as a, in, in your own individual conclusions not needing outside validation you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like i go to in the sand and i go hey sifu look so i came up with this drill see and this and this and this he goes oh yeah yeah we threw that away um uh you know like 30 years ago I'm like damn <laughs> 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 right is he right. but that's part of it because you are supposed to be working stuff out for yourself, but you're not working stuff out for yourself in a vacuum. There's way too much information, way too much knowledge out there, right? Written, uh, personally uh, transmitted, 
right, or what have you, for people to be operating in a vacuum. It's like, oh, I'm going to come up with my own version of Jeet Kune. Well, that, that, that's another thing. People coming up with their own style. What the heck? Bruce Lee came up with his own style. So I, I inspired by Bruce Lee, I'm going to come up with my own style. So, okay. So I'm going to take this percentage from karate. I'm going to take this percentage from jujitsu. I'm going to take this percentage from Krav Maga. I'm going to take this percentage from uh, Sambo. I'm going to take this percentage, right? See, and I'm, and I'm going to create my style out of these um, deadly arts. So now I've done the same thing that Bruce Lee did. I've created my own style. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, exa that's exactly what Bruce Lee did, right? He took a certain percentage from Wing Chun. He took a certain, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. He took a certain percentage from fencing. And then he took another certain percentage from, um, from boxing, right? And he put those percentages together and came up with a hundred percent Jeet Kune Do. That's how it happened. And I'm you heard you heard that, it here first, folks. I would have put that in Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wikipedia. Um, yep. I'm, I'm not going to tell that story. Never mind, because it's not related to what we're talking about. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, it's just a foolish Wikipedia and pre-calc story. You don't. It's not important. <laughs> But now, uh, let's let's talk about social media, shall we? Okay. On the martial arts landscape. Um, okay. So you you and I are well before that. Um, let me ask this. So so you, you and I are fairly. That, if you stay that close to the camera, I think you don't fuzz out. Okay, I will. Yeah. I will do my darndest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I'm like constantly thinking about my posture now. <laughs> it, ta it takes a concentrated effort to attain perfection, right? Yep. So you and I are, are are old school. At least I like to think you're old school. Um, you know, we're we're prepared to eat bitter in pursuit of martial arts knowledge, right? Teacher say, student do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, today, with social media and like near instant gratification, right? Mm -hmm. um, and again, viewing martial arts as a service, um, how do you appeal to clients or potential clients who just want to do all the fancy stuff? I want to hit, I want to do X, Y, Z, but they don't necessarily want to take the time to lay down that foundational work. How would you, or not even necessarily you as a Jeet Do instructor, but how would you as just a martial arts professional appeal to those individuals? So there's a number of things. One, you have to work on tricking them into- Disguising the reps? <laughs> <laughs> I hate that phrase, as you know. I right? know, that's why I um, say it. <laughs> but, but, uh, but so you have to, you have to, you have to, you, yeah, it's not it's not even disguising because it, it can be very obvious what it is that you're doing, right? So mm -hmm. if I make you if I make you um, um, step through lunge, right, going forward, mm -hmm. and I make you kick with the step through lunge, I make you step through lunge going backward, and I make you and I add a kick to that. I'm giving you the workout that you're looking for. But I'm also working on the martial art, te the technical martial art fundamental as well, mm -hmm. right? So I discovered, so a lot of my tricks came from um, during the years that I taught fitness kickboxing because I could not sell out, right? I have, I have a client mm -hmm. who uh, first trained with me in the early 1990s okay she's a private client of mine right 
Uh, but she's not able to train with me as often as she wants to. So we looked around and we sent her to one of the commercial fitness kickboxing um, places, right? Mm -hmm. So of course she goes in and what's one of the first things they go? Oh, who did you train with? Right? She's like, I've been training with Dwight Wood since I was 18, right? Because it shows, you see? And so she reports to me, a lot of it is about cardio. And that's it. Mm -hmm. It's not about technique. So goes back to what we talked about in the beginning. JKD ends up in that middle ground. How can I find a way to give people what it is they're looking for? but to also educate them that they should be looking for something else. You see? Because right. that's the key, right? It's, it's that proverbial giving customers what they want, but also what they need. Mm -hmm. That's where artistry comes in. That's where, as a business person, whether you want to use that term or not, that's what you got to sit down and think about long and hard and then come up with ways. Cause here's the thing, see, you know, anybody who cares, who want, who aims to be mediocre? No. Okay. So when somebody said, no, 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 I don't need all that like martial arts discipline and, and technique and whatever. I just want to sweat. That's not true. That's not true. That statement is born out of a fear that if you work on getting good, you might not succeed and then you'll feel like a failure. So rather than rather than dealing with that, you should say, no, nah, I just want to sweat. You know, I, I, I don't I don't want to know about form and, and proper. I don't want to know about the history of Bruce Lee and this and that. I'm not interested in any of that. I just want to sweat. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, okay. Now you got to find a way to take that type of person, make them sweat, right? But also inculcate some appreciation and recognition of the need for proper technical execution. Because, because I think they've gotten better based on what my, my client said. I think they've gotten better um, in, so for example, like pivoting, teaching people to pivot when they kick. Apparently mm -hmm. they've gotten better, probably because too many people were getting hurt. Yeah. So apparently they've gotten better at, at, at that. But, um, but yeah, it is, I love the challenge of having to be creative right having to structure things so that people don't get bored see because you could say well you shouldn't get bored because what i'm teaching you is good for you <laughs> yeah that's true but that's not necessarily realistic you see mm -hmm. because here's the thing like I just said, nobody wants to be mediocre, but that doesn't mean that they're going to come and admit to you that they don't want to be mediocre because not right. enough people have that, that degree of self-confidence to come to you and say, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm afraid. I don't know if I can trust you to be the person to take me to the next to the, the, the point that I want to get to. So mm -hmm. as the instructor, you have to recognize that and you have to know what it takes to, in the beginning stages, um, impart to that person the feeling that they can trust you. So you got to know what it takes to, 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 to get people uh, to that point. 
And then you have to deliver on that promise. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to promise them that their their time, their money, their energy, all that stuff will be well spent with you. And then you have to deliver on that promise. And some people will tell you not merely deliver, you should over deliver, right? Un, uh, was it under promise and over deliver? Interesting. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to think in terms of what's next, right? Somebody gets in touch mm -hmm. with you. Somebody sends you an email or, or says something to you on social media, right? About joining your group. What's next? Mm -hmm. Then they come in, they take whatever intro program it is that you have. What's next, right? They sign up, they become a new member. What's next? All of that, you have to have a system. You have to have a method. You have to have a system that answers that question of what's next and you go through that all the way up to who knows when right? right because you can have people you know my other client that i was with this this morning he has people in his ministry who've been with him for 20 years well martial art is a ministry of sorts because we sure. have people Right. We have people who've been with us for 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, Dan Kennedy teaches that um, it's it's the quality of the relationship that you form. That's why people stick around. Mm -hmm. You see, it's because it's not that after 20 years, you don't have anything left to teach them. That's not necessarily true. But. It's highly unlikely, I believe, that anybody's gonna stick around for two decades based on techniques. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, as creative as I might want to be, I don't think I can disguise the repetition of the psychic, right? So uniquely <laughs> over 20 years that, you know, that a guy is like, oh man, I ain't never done the psychic like this before. I never thought of that way, <laughs> right? I, I don't think I'm that good. Right? I might try to be, but I don't think I'm that good. You see? So there's a lot of things that you have to that you have to take into consideration if you're gonna be if you're gonna be like a real instructor. Mm -hmm. Did somebody come in? Yeah, you can speak. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell them just Tell them to stop very soon. Okay, thank you, sweetie. All righty. <laughs> How old are your kids? <laughs> uh, my daughter is six and my son is eight. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, she she turned seven in um August. Oh. So they're they're pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I thought she, she... Never mind. Not important. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so going back to social media and, right. you know, just oh, saying right. things. I, I, oh, I sorry. Know, did I answer your question? What, what? Oh, no. Yeah, you did. You did. It was, it was about people who want to do the fancy without necessarily laying down the foundation. And, um, you know, that could, that just ties into social media because again, um, with the social media landscape where, you know, there, you can just see everything cool. You know, you're on Instagram. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, let me try that next time in training. Or, ooh, that person did yeah. something new. Maybe I should pick up that skill. So, again, you're looking at that instant gratification, right? Mm -hmm. Now, with regards to Jeet Kune Do or martial arts in general, uh, how do you think social media has influenced the martial arts landscape for the better? Because we, we had kind of just talked about you know, the ugly or not, not necessarily the ugly, but um, how people don't necessarily want to put in the work. They just want to, oh, I want to get to this level, right? Yeah. You did that. I can do that. Yeah, you could after a certain period of time. But, um, you know, that's that becomes a hurdle, right? right? So trying to look at the positives here, what positives do you think social media has had on Jeet Kune Do and or martial arts? 
I think social media, its effect in general is mm. exposure. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, you know, we we're talking about under promise and over deliver. Yes, There's such a thing as over exposure, right? Okay. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. right, social media brought a certain degree of, let's call it equality to the world because everybody with one of these could, and, and an internet connection, mm -hmm. right? There's like democracy in that. I could put it out on the internet, mm -hmm. right? You can put it out on the internet. So now the playing field is kind of level because everybody with, an, with a smartphone and an internet connection can put their stuff out there. But now, so you're in the game. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you rise to the top of the field in the game? You got to know what to do. You got to know how to do it. You see? So you put up the flashy technique and people are like, ah, I want to know how to do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's start playing the game. It starts at this level, right? I mean, and, and, and the, now here's the thing. See, again, balance, because you don't want to go too far with it. Who is sure. there that thinks I saw this flashy technique, right? And I want to come learn that. Who is there really, really that thinks that's how you learn? No, they don't. But they don't know. Russ, okay. I'm, I'm almost doing a Joe Biden where I don't finish my sentences. But we do it for two different reasons. Right? Okay? Right? <laughs> I, 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 when I don't finish my sentences because I think of another way to explain it. Right? There was a time, I would say it was 1992, when mm -hmm. the phone would ring at Unified Martial Art. And the question would be, do you guys teach Aikido? Right? Really? Yes. Now, why? Why, uh, why did that start happening in 1992? I'm going to say it was 1992. Steven Seagal. Yes. <laughs> right? I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. I'm what I'm saying. Above the law was released and was a hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. somebody has a thought. I want to know how to defend myself. I saw this great stuff in this movie. This guy defending himself against multiple bad guys, right? I know it's a movie, but it still looks like it could work. So let me call this karate school. And I don't want to call and say, I have no idea what I should study to learn to defend myself. Can you please help me? Nobody's going to do that. They're going to call you, right? And they're going to want to sound like, okay, well, I don't know if you are a trickster, so I don't want to end up giving you money and, and you're a charlatan or whatever. So I got to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Do you teach Aikido? <laughs> right? You see? So now if I go, uh, no, we don't. And then you go, okay, thank you. And you hang up. Mm -hmm. I'm the idiot. You see? Because I should know that you don't know the first thing about Aikido. You heard the name and you put you put two and two together and ended up with five. You don't even know you ended up with five. So you call my school and you ask me if I teach Aikido. And me, you know, Mr. Pure Jeet Kune Do integrity guy, I don't lie. I said, uh, no, we don't, right? And I lose a sale. That ain't good business. You see, good business, you understand that the general public, there's a reason why they're the general public. There's a reason why they're not the specific public. Now, here's specificity. A guy calls, right? Not a guy. I, I use guy 
uh, intergenderally, right? I'm from California. Everyone is dude, bro, guy. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> right? So somebody calls and they go, you're a Jeet Kune Do school, right? I go, yes, we are. They go, and your lineage is Dan and Asano, right? Yes, we are. That's specific public. That's not general public. You get what I'm saying? Correct. So the conversation is going to go a little bit differently with that caller, even though we're going to end up the same place, then it's going to go with the, you guys teach Aikido? <laughs> but both people want what it is that I have to offer. Mm -hmm. I just got to know how to talk to them. That means I have to study the art of answering the phone at my martial arts school. I can't just go, no, we don't teach Aikido. Boom, hang up. Right. I just lost an opportunity to bring some kind of value to somebody, to be of service, to be of some kind of service to somebody. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, somebody might say, oh, Dwight's just talking sales and business and whatever, whatever. All right. You know why I have no compunction about that? You ever seen the books on Bruce Lee's shelf? Oh, like uh, like all the business books and whatnot? Like the art of selling yourself, there you right? Go. So yeah. any jackass comes to me, oh, Jeet Kune Do this and selling, shut the hell up. <laughs> on the founder's bookshelf, right? is big time selling the art of selling yourself um how to whatever in sales how a salesman can increase his sales so don't lecture me all right okay <laughs> get off that high horse don't come to me with that nonsense no 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 because bruce lee was no idiot why did bruce lee study how to make a friggin film how to be a good director because the the, the principle is this are you into a thing? Be the best that you can be in the thing. So it wasn't like, I'm Bruce Lee. I'm a badass. I can kick and punch and trap and grapple and swing stick with the best of them. Put me in your movie. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Now we'll just go. And because I'm Bruce Lee, we just go. You film it. It'll be a, it'll be a knockout. No. Because there's friggin' art to it. And art requires study. And Bruce Lee was no idiot. So he knew he had to study and work his ass off. So that's what he did. So that's what you do too. You study and work your ass off. Instead of, oh, Bruce said this, shut the hell up. You weren't there. You don't even know the friggin' context. And when Bruce said what Bruce said, when Bruce wrote what Bruce wrote, and you have you, you notice on on the internet a lot of dumb people do not have the friggin common sense the simple common sense to think what was the time frame what might have been bruce lee's mindset when he said this wrote this or whatever no they impose their 2022 thinking on bruce <laughs> lee like if he ever asked them to do that Right. And start projecting all over the place. Oh, no, Bruce would have this. How that? And, and you know what's the best? You know what's the best? When they say Bruce would of O V O O F. Right. Uh, the friggin' smartphone can't even do proper grammar. I hate right. that shit. I they, listen. I'm going to tell you something. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So my twin brother. Because, you know, I'm, I'm born June 2nd, so I'm a Gemini. My twin brother, right, would like to cancel all those people. Anybody who comments on something of mine on Facebook or sends me a text message, right, and it's might of, could of, right? I want to cancel. My, my twin brother wants to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay? My twin brother wants to get Right? If they mess up, you're the possessive, right? And you're the contraction. My twin brother wants to cancel them and have nothing to do with them evermore. But I realize what it is. Because when I text as little as I like to, I realize <laughs> that 
the phone itself doesn't know the grammar. So that's mm -hmm. why people don't know the difference between it's and it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Between possessive and contraction, right? Of it is. My twin mm -hmm. brother, not me, because I'm even keel, right? You know, yeah. I, I'm I'm you know, I don't I don't get upset about anything. But my no, twin no. brother, my twin brother wants to cancel their asses, man. I'm telling you. Right, because he's 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 a severe individual. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's 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 a good spot to end that question. So, just one more just social media what, question. Just um, do what 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 um guy guy Richie. Just do what guy Richie said. You're in the game, right? So do your utmost to own the game. That's another way of saying study and improve your art, whatever it is. Yeah, I, I forget who said it, but there was um, insofar as like studying and improving, or uh, it, it, it's it's a quote. I think it's uh, learn the rules so, or learn the rules like an artist, so you can break them like a pro or some or learn. Or it, it might be the other way, but you know the idea is the same. I'm understanding the principles and the foundation, or what I need to get to point B, right from A. Yeah. And now my path or my training method, what have you, yeah. you know, that's where I'm gonna make those strides, make that difference. Right? Yeah. I, I, um, I have a a, a, a saying. You you might have heard this one, right? There are you want to you you want to obey laws, right? Okay, mm -hmm. because because law is different from rule. You see, so there's a rule at the beginning stages that you follow, because mm -hmm. by applying that rule, by following that rule, you'll develop solid technique. But there is a time where rule becomes a guideline, guideline, or even a suggestion. You see, because there comes a time when you're at a level where you can break them rules, which is different from breaking laws. Break laws and you probably end up, you know, where you don't want to be. But rules, there's a level at which a rule is merely a guideline and not something that you have to stick to. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say if anybody was to ask me. Mm -hmm. But they never, no one did. So they, never asked, you. <laughs> they never asked me that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now it's 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 a good it's a good it's a good Dwightism. Right? Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. Uh, so you're on you're on Facebook, Instagram. I th yeah, you are on Instagram, Twitter. I think also you said. Yeah, I don't do. When are you uh, Twitter? Mm -hmm. Right. When are you get on TikTok and Snapchat though? Isn't that like girls and naked people? I don't know. I don't have it. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was just, we were just talking about social media. I figured, like, that's that's what the yeah, kids are yeah, into yeah. these yeah. days, right? No, 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 no. Um, I don't. I in in. Um, do I have it here? Do I have it here? Is it near at hand? No, it's not. But in traffic secrets, Russell Brunson doesn't talk about TikTok and Snapchat, as far as I know. Right. So okay. So I'm not interested. I, I, I again, right? Overexposure. Okay, can mm -hmm. some people would say yes? Maybe you should be everywhere. Look at the late Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers was everywhere. She was on late night. She was on Q, QVC. She was on the radio. She was Joan Rivers was everywhere. So mm -hmm. maybe, um, maybe there. Well, there probably is an advantage to being everywhere. But at the end of the day, do I have to be? Now, maybe you could say. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be on social media? No. You don't have to be, no. No. I know I know people who, I know people who are quite successful who still communicate by fax. Wow. They don't have email. That's a really old sentence. They don't have they don't <laughs> they don't have email. Okay? Wow. Fax. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. I wish I could do that. Right? Um, for, <laughs> it's a lot to be on social media for the mm -hmm. first for the first 12 years probably 
of having a mobile phone, mm -hmm. I would say less than 10 people knew that I had a phone and maybe only five people knew the number to it. There were some wow. people who knew I had a phone, but they didn't know that, that I, because I had two office numbers, mm -hmm. right? One was public, the other one was more or less private. And it was actually, I had that second phone because that was my fax line. <laughs> because I used, I, yeah, I used to communicate with my mentor by fax. So that's why I had that second line. So, um, but that was my private line in my office. Um, but yeah, so no, I don't know that uh, yeah, only fans, that's what it's called. It's yeah. Oh, TikTok. that one, that one's different. Yeah. TikTok and Snapchat. It, it, that, no, that's like, I, I don't, I don't know that any of, I don't know anybody I'd be, that I would be interested or who would be interested in me is over on TikTok and Snapchat. All right. Snapchat so is got? like 13 year old people, right? Doing uh, stuff that they shouldn't be doing because it disappears after 24 hours or something. That's the one, right? I think. Yeah. I don't know how I don't know how it works today, but like when you send a message or whatever, yeah, yeah. it's gone after twenty four hours. I yeah, just know yeah, yeah. all my young yeah. guns, all my young guns are like, well, I, I just recently made an Instagram for for the academy page, and then okay, um, even then they're like, well, what about TikTok and Snapchat? And I'm like, what about TikTok and Snapchat, yeah. man? Yeah. Like, I just yeah. I, I just got on Instagram for you. I don't um, know that. Yeah, but but what you could do mm -hmm. is uh, you you, sh you show double stick. Right, mm -hmm. and then you translate that into some dance moves. Boom! Instant TikTok fame, instant Snapchat fame. You're hey, done. I did. I did have instant fame on the dance floor twenty something years ago at um, Space Nightclub downtown Miami with glow sticks. Because mm -hmm. I, I can see that. I, Oh yeah, I just double stick my myself across the dance floor the whole night. <laughs> I was a big, I was a big time hit, man. Right. <laughs> it's funny. I used my my brother and I used to mess around and um, you know, I I do tai chi and uh, what we ended up doing was putting on some like some house music and mm -hmm. in, instead of doing the form super slow, I just like did it to the beat and super jerky and yeah. we, we we made a few silly videos that way. Yeah. But yeah. You know, I, sh I should I should check if that will work today on social media. That's what I should do. Anyway, I, ha I have I have a okay. I have a, a a song by um by I don't use it often enough, and I don't think I've ever shown anybody. But it's one of my favorite songs for shadow box into, right? Mm -hmm. And and it's it's a song by by Billy Preston, so y'all wouldn't know it. Um, but there is there is a break in the song, right? And I remember one time I hit and I was I was doing Carenza, and um, mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think I don't think it's on video anywhere, but there's a break in this song where when it happens and you just start you just start chopping right like this to the beat. I think it's pretty cool, but I don't know if I have should... I don't know if I have the confidence to do that. <laughs> oh man, forget confidence, just have you know, fun. I, you, you know who you know if if he hears this, you know who's gonna get on my case about that. My good friend uh, Jared Joseph, the filmmaker. Okay, he's he's gonna oh yeah. Get, yeah, he's there gonna get go. on, he's gonna get on me for that. If he ever hears that I said that, he'll be like, Dwight, you gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> is he on social media? Is he on Facebook? Because we can uh, no, no, no. G oh. stays, he stays off of Facebook. Right? Shenanigans. He stays off of Facebook, right. but he's he's on Instagram. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. Oh, um, awesome, awesome, awesome filmmaker and actor. Right, real Trinidadian mm -hmm. guy. He he was on he he and my it was um. I mean, we'll have to do a follow-up, but we did, we did this a, a couple of years ago. It was me, G, Jared, and um, and Marvin Ishmael, right? Mm -hmm. You know Marvin, right? Because you, you guys I know, know of, yeah. I, have, I haven't met oh, okay. Marvin. Right. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I know he uh, he had a few um, representatives down in Seattle for mm -hmm. 2020, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. he's, I think Marvin was the first person to um, receive an affiliate from uh, the Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute, the Seattle Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute. I think he was the first person to receive an affiliate from them. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All good guys. All, all good guys. Um, yeah. All right. So now that we kind of got those first questions out of the way in the first hour, 
Oh, is that um, the easy stuff? Yeah. Uh, I mean, this this stuff might be easy too. Uh, I I just have some questions from my students that um, mm -hmm. I asked them like, hey, if you guys want me to touch on anything, send them my way. And there were a few I threw out. There, there were some dumb questions. <laughs> it was like, does JKD have like a monastery? I was like, get that out of here. I'm I'm not even gonna start uh, that. So that that's not a reflection on me as an instructor. That's uh, what she does on her own time and her own imagination. You know, I have no okay. control over. Okay. So, uh, but but other stuff. This this could be easy. It might not be. Um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, fair warning to those watching, um, this is kind of, this first question anyway, is, it's a very personal question and, you know, I, I, I have to put that trigger warning out there for those who have been in um, abusive situations, but uh, anyway, that there's the preface for that. Okay. Okay. So, and I'm just going to read this out because I don't want to misspeak as I say it, so it's not going to be very conversational, but yes. Um, so I am changing some, some details just to protect the identity. Mm -hmm. However, I've had a client who's been a victim of uh, physical abuse. As a survivor, he or she is hesitant to be involved with martial arts for two reasons. Uh, this person's worried about becoming physically violent themselves, and two, worried about potentially causing physical or emotional trauma for another individual. Um, how would training Jeet Kune Do help this individual find inner peace? And how would you address parents who are concerned about their children growing up and using their physical prowess to address their problems? I know that there's a lot there. There's a lot there. So a lot of that can be and or should be addressed in your intake mm -hmm. procedure, mm -hmm. right? So I think we've talked about this before. A lot of people, it's like, we go back to that phone call. You guys teach Aikido? No, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Okay, so what do people do? They tell people to come down and take a free class. And then mm -hmm. at the end of that free class, they try to get them to sign up. Right. I practice what is known as delaying the sale. So no. Mm -hmm. I don't know you well enough at the end of a free class to let you into my school. You might be a moron, right? So here's what we do. You sit down and we talk first, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if it's possible, we talk and we do a private lesson in the same visit. If it's not possible, then we don't. You come mm -hmm. back a second time and you do that private lesson. So between the um, initial conference mm -hmm. and the introductory lesson, right? The private lesson, I will have asked questions that tell me why you're here, why you're in front of me. And I'll have mm -hmm. an idea of what your concerns are you see so now do you remember I was, I was telling you about what's next yes yeah so this is part of that right so if parents bring a kid in and they're concerned then we're going to touch on that right the, mm -hmm. the 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 catchphrase i think the catchphrase in the martial art industry is how to convert aggressiveness into assertiveness, right? Uh, Which I think is a pretty decent catchphrase. So I think that everybody should use it, right? Taking notes. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right? how, to, how to convert, how to convert aggressiveness into assertiveness because, because the kid that has the tendency to bully others needs martial mm -hmm. art training as much as does the kid who yes. is being bullied. Right. That's that's the thing uh, 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 about, about martial art training and the benefits mm -hmm. that that it provides. Now, for the, the 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 adult who has suffered abuse and is 
and fear of becoming an abuser that that was a question right that was that was an element of the question right? uh yeah yeah now that's an in, that's an interesting one um because to me what that's saying is that if like i'm afraid that if i learn how to fight then out of resentment i'll start fighting and getting even with people mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell you something i think that anybody who came in with that mindset might drop it really quickly once they start training because they'll okay. start to realize they'll start to realize right that that might that you're not gonna get anywhere i had i had a guy right I had a guy mm -hmm. um I, I have no idea if i've ever told this story on facebook or, or the youtube before <laughs> when i before i moved here when i used to come up to visit and I used to go over to my friend's uh, Taekwondo school. Mm -hmm. There was this kid that in the sparring had the worst attitude. If he got popped, if he got tagged, he got so red and he was like in a rage and what have you. And I always wondered, why do they let this guy continue to train here? And one day, right, mm -hmm. I saw him pull up. And he's like 16 or 17, okay? Mm -hmm. And I saw him pull up in his own BMW. So then I understood. <laughs> okay? So then I understood why they keep him as, 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 as a member of that school. He had the worst attitude, okay? Years mm -hmm. later, years later, same cat shows up at my school, right? wanting to learn filipino knife fighting oh yeah right now he doesn't recognize me i know exactly who he is mm -hmm. right never took him on right you see because mm -hmm. you got it yeah yeah you, you gotta, know you've got to go ahead you got to know what you're doing mm -hmm. right so he that that a guy a guy like that could never be my student. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't care how much BMW you drive. <laughs> you know. Let me uh let me pretend that I that I have people who need my attention also. I'm back, I'm back. Hey Buck, can you shut the door? <laughs> Uh, sorry. Um, dad life, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, more power to you. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's a process this week. Yeah. Um, she's in Europe. We touched on everything there, right? Uh, yeah, she's she's in the UK. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. yeah. I told her to go train with a uh, Phil Norman, Bob Green, ah! Rick Young. <laughs> She was like, she's like, that's the drive. I'm like, don't don't worry about the drive. Don't worry about the the cost. You're investing in your training, <laughs> right? And um, she, uh, I don't I don't think she's going. <laughs> I was like, you could become an you could become a ghost instructor like me. We could both teach class. Yeah, no, but, no, no. She's just yeah. your wife, Russell. She's not you. <laughs> no, she she was my training partner for a number of years. Okay, and she's um, still not you. <laughs> no, she's not. She right. just likes to try to beat me up because she's very competitive. When gotcha. I'm like, oh, let me try working this technique instead of like progressive resistance, she's just like mm -hmm. balls to the wall. Just I'm coming at you. I'm like, hey man, no one learns that way. Calm down, slow down, yep. right? Yeah. Um, but she, she's a, there, there is. She's a she's a good training partner. Uh, just nice. very competitive. Um, nice. All right. Uh, for a client who has a strong religious background or, or what have you, how would you advise incorporating martial arts into their daily life on the basis of that faith? So she, I don't know if I I don't know if you need any additional information, but she her her faith is very strong. She just wanted me to see what your two cents were insofar as martial arts and 
religion working together. So I can remember um, what I can't remember is if it was the entire family that trained with me or if it was just the parents' concern about the kids uh, because they had this idea because, of course, you have the pictures of Bruce Lee and Dan and Asano and whoever else on the wall. Me, of course, I had a picture of Bob Marley, too, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's like some things right. never change, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some things, <laughs> some, some things, some things never change, right? So, so, and I guess they had heard, you know, that um, in martial art there's all this Oriental stuff, you know, right? Oh, okay. okay. But yeah. now here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing. Where is Jesus from? Let's talk about G that's we'll just pick Jesus. Where is Jesus from? Is Jesus from the West or from the Occident or is Jesus from the Orient? Where is Jesus from? I want to let you run with this right now. Yeah. I'm not going to get involved in this okay. conversation. Right? Okay. So Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Where is Bethlehem? Right? So if you think of all the places that are associated with Jesus, right? Nazareth, Bethlehem, Galilee, where are all those places? In the West or in the East? So the origin of um, religions that are strongly identified with, in, with the West or in the West, their origins are in the East. Mm -hmm. Similarly with martial art, their origins might be in the East, but we practice them and train them here in the West. Mm -hmm. You see? So I would explain to people when we do the salutations at the start and the end of class, mm -hmm. okay? It is it, out of respect. It is not worshiping anybody, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because you'll notice that when the class faces me, I face them. So you'll notice that the class never pays respects to me while I stand there like this. I pay right. respects to the class as well. And then all of us turn and pay respects, right, to mm -hmm. the people on earth. So it's not worship. It is a form of paying respects. It has nothing mm -hmm. at all to do with worship, right? And then if we, wanted, if we wanted to stretch, if we wanted to stretch this idea, there is fighting in the Bible. <laughs> yes. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot. Right. <laughs> in in the garden in the garden of Gethsemane, right? Jesus Jesus says to um, I think it was to Simon Peter, right? About you know not drawing his sword. Right. So, I mean, mm -hmm. so it sounds as if at least one of the disciples was there in like a bodyguard capacity <laughs> <laughs> you know right so i'm not i'm not trying i'm not trying to make fun of it but it's it's just a, no. yes, we have we have to communicate to people that um that martial art and mysticism right or well there are some martial art um uh, uh, methods where the mysticism is is built in not with us not with mm -hmm. us jkd especially was pragmatic and practical and stripped away of all that traditionalism, classicalism, mysticism, all of that stuff. Bruce Lee was interested in self-actualization. So if, if in your practice of religion, 
your practice of religion is to help you to be the best version of you, then martial art will assist in that as well. Mm -hmm. You see, yes, because what martial art is going to do is going to rinse you out physically to the point where the mind has to kick in. You see, the mind mm -hmm. has to kick in and pick up the pace and go, okay, one more. That's self-development. That has nothing. It's so anybody from any religion will benefit from that type of martial art experience. Mm -hmm. You see, the Christian is not going to have an easier job, right? <laughs> being rinsed, right? Of being rinsed out, right? I don't care who it is that you pray to, you know, when you wake up and when you go to bed and during the day, right? Nah, 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 nah. If I put you in a Thai boxing workout, you're going to gas, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you see, so that's so that's so no, um, but again, all those concerns, right? All those mm -hmm. questions have to be brought up during the intake procedure so that people right. who join you on the training floor are people who want to be there mm -hmm. and they are 100% sure that they want to be there. If somebody mm -hmm. at the end of an initial conference at the end of an introductory program, private lesson, two group classes. If you're not sure, try it for 30 days. Wow. At the end of 30 days, make your decision. Right? Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not excuse me, I'm not gonna behave like I'm desperate, you know. For, for this mm -hmm. new student or, or or what have you. No, so if you're not sure, right? And of course, if this person <laughs> ends up not, not being sure, that's a lesson for me. I'm learning something. I, I now go back to the office and I examine at what point it is that something might have gone wrong, so to speak, that this person ended up not being convinced. Mm -hmm. Right, that he or she should be training with me, so that now I gotta, I gotta, I gotta improve, I gotta improve that, I gotta work on that. What, where did it happen? Right, that's how I approached. That's how I approached uh, running my school, which is why, for almost thirty years, we were we were quite successful. Right, mm -hmm. um, and I never, uh, I shouldn't do this. You started. You started. I never put it's up to you. It's up to you. I never put them in belts or sashes. Mm. <laughs> I brought that upon myself. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. I can't resist. But I will say it again. No, it's fine. It's fine. When I do that, when I do that, what I'm saying is, look, if it works for you, fine. Mm -hmm. I have no interest in it. It is not a condemnation of anybody no. who is doing it in whatever way. That I, I, I made a joke with Ed Stahl, right? Because there was a picture of him. Okay. And, guys, and I was like, Ed, are those towels that you guys are wearing? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, right? I mean, because look, if I wouldn't do it. I don't ever sure. see myself uh, doing it, mm -hmm. but if it works for people, then you know more po more power to them. Uh, yeah, anyway. I, I think if the curriculum and the the instruction is good, sashes and belts are are just they're just that a sash and a belt, right? Yeah, it's, it's not it's not take for me, okay, mm -hmm. for me. Uh, it's not taken away from uh the quality of learning um now for I, i'm not going to defend myself right now that's not what this is about yeah. anyway <laughs> now if someone were to, really if someone were to ask me right. what i would say <laughs> is right. no, it's, it's okay um i can post it in the comments later yeah um but yeah nothing to defend because it's not a condemnation right um now uh, I had an answer for this. I actually never told my student my my answer, but it's. I think it's a it's a fairly easy question here. Um, mm -hmm. 
So Jeet Kune Do is known for being a very offensive art, right? There's a lot of no, trash talking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but you know, there, there's this idea of very, there's this idea of not having many, if any, passive movements, I guess. Um, so for those who train martial arts as a self-defense art, how would you, and this is this is not my wording, but how would you explain making an offensive art like Jeet Kune Do into something defensive? And again, I had my, my I had my own answer for that, but um, you know, okay, you're fair. Dwight Woods and we're not I Dwight. Know. Yeah, but let's hear your answer while I look up the direct quote, right, for mine. Okay, so as far as Jeet Kune Do is concerned, Jeet, right, we're looking at intercepting. So okay. while, if, if you look at it as an offensive art, right? Mm -hmm. um, as the opponent comes toward me, that allows me an opportunity to intercept him. Um, but that's that's just me being defensive. I stop him at the gate, right? Because we want to emphasize that is the ideal time to to stop the enemy. Um, mm -hmm. That was my very basic answer to that question. Was well, you know, if if someone's coming at me, whether mm -hmm. or not an art is seemed as offensive or defensive. I have to defend myself. So it's defensive, right? If I, if I kick you in the knee or if I poke you in the eye out of self-defense, I have taken an aggressive motion or an offensive motion, but used it in a self-defense context, right? So that would be my answer. Okay. My very surface level answer. Well, it, it can be, it can be, uh, it can be refined, right? So, mm -hmm. There, 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 there should be, there needs to be a paradigm shift away from this idea that Jeet Kune Do is offensive. That Jeet Kune Do is okay. an offensive art, right? That's nonsense. Okay. So here's what it says. I think uh, I know what you're going to quote, but go ahead. Right. There is little direct attack in Jeet Kune Do. Is that what you were expecting? No. That is the first, but that is the first line right, in the section on attack. That is the first oh. line, the first sentence. There is little direct attack in Jeet Kune Do. Practically all offensive action is indirect, coming after a feint or taking the form of countering after an opponent's attack is foiled or spent. It requires agile maneuvering, feinting and drawing an opponent a scientific plan. Uh -huh. Yes. So all those out there talking about Jeet Kune Do, offensive this and offensive that, idiots. Idiots. They don't understand. They don't get it. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, defensive. You hit me, I defend. You hit me, I defend. You hit me, I defend. You're still going to be um, encouraged to keep attacking me because all I'm doing is defending. And right. at some point, something's going to get through. You let, you let enough people try to hit you enough times something's gonna get through mm -hmm. so what if you try to hit me and i counter you instead of defend it mm -hmm. people don't Less understand like, people don't understand like here's how stupid mm -hmm. here's how stupid it is here's how stupid they are g condo offensive or they shut the hell up intercept what do you intercept? You intercept intent. intent or their movement towards you. Mm -hmm. You're not being defensive. You're being counter offensive. They make the move. They get to start, but you finish. Mm -hmm. The art is counter offensive. And again, where do we get that? What is counter offense? It goes right back to what we, start, we talked about at the beginning. The balance between... Offense and defense. Offense and defense blended together is counter offense. Mm -hmm. You see, people don't think of that because they're dumb. Right? <laughs> right? Is it? Oh, Jeet Kune Do, the five ways of attack. Oh, offensive or shut the hell up. You don't even know what the hell you're talking about. No, 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 no. All right. Okay, so enough of that. <laughs> yeah. So. 
Now it's time for me. I'm, I'm aiming to misbehave, like I said. So. Okay. What did I say? I'm aiming to, to contain, contain the misbehaving. The misbehaving? Okay. Containing the misbehaving. I think I changed um, that. I'm aiming to join you in the misbehaving. Yeah, well, I'm not jumping straight in. I'm going to. Well, <laughs> this is going to be a super simple question. Okay. Um, uh, and while you answer that, I'm going to run and get my charger because I didn't expect my battery to drain so quickly. Okay. Um, but uh, do you think Jeet Kune Do should be more popular than it is? And if not, why isn't it? Okay. Do I or think? G okay. Go, yeah, go do your thing if you need. Do I think Jeet Kune Do should be more popular than it is? And if it isn't, why isn't it? Yes. Of course, I okay. think Jeet Kune Do should be more popular than it is because if it's more popular than it is now, guess what? More people will look up Jeet Kune Do in Miami and they'll call me, right? So I'll get more students and I'll make more money ostensibly. So yes, I do think Jeet Kune Do, and I've said this before on probably on the on the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast or, or, or what have you, right? Yes, Jeet Kune Do should be more popular than it was 30 years ago before uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, Jeet Kune Do sold itself. Um, it was the thing in magazines. And so when people opened up magazines, if people were looking for martial arts stuff, that Jeet Kune Do was, was all over the place, right? And then that shifted. So yes, I think it should be more popular than it is. Now, why is it not as popular as it was back then or as it could be? Because, because Jeet Kune Do lost its perch, right? I, I think I said this in, in, a, in an I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast the other day. It lost its perch on the, um, on the, the, the pedestal of functionality, functionality and all that stuff. And a lot of that is because uh, because Brazilian Jiu Jitsu came in and showed itself uh, because of its um, ubiquity. It showed itself to be the 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 go to art for practicality and functionality and what have you. Um, the Krav Maga people did a better job also of marketing their art, and so they developed a, a reputation. And see what Krav Maga has is they, now they, they have an organizing body. Now they might have more than one um, international world organization or what have you, right? They probably do. But in either case, both organizations do a very good job of promoting the art. And they might even be antagonistic towards each other because there's always antagonism between um, the different organizations of a same art. So Jeet Kune Do will be the same way. But I think Jeet Kune Do has a unique aspect to it in that nobody in Jeet Kune Do knows how to market it on a wide basis. They might know how to market it in their town, but on a wide basis, not so much. And part of that is because one reason why that is, and, and it's it's not it's it's not because of because of the people so much. Well, I, I don't even know. <laughs> one reason why is because there is no set of no fixed curriculum, no set curriculum. Mm -hmm. This is the Jeet Kune Do curriculum. So, right now, I'm pretty sure that in Krav Maga there is. So, even if you are international Krav Maga Federation, I don't know if that exists, or you are World Krav Maga Federation, I don't know if that exists. I bet you they have maybe the same or or a very similar curriculum. If, if, you, if you look at um, the Japanese Karate Association, Shotokan Karate of America, International Shotokan Karate Federation, those are three different organizations for Shotokan. But guess what? 
everybody starts with he and shodan and then go to he and uh nidan and then go to he and sanda nobody starts with mp doesn't happen three different organizations but they all have the same structure we don't have that in jeet Kune Do. so it is it's not possible then to move the whole art forward mm -hmm. because this guy has an idea that guy has an idea this guy is that lineage that guy is that lineage and so it cannot move forward so it can be popular in in spurts i guess or even in in splotches around the world yeah but mm -hmm. it's not gonna i i don't see it ever making worldwide impact like on mass okay a, a guy a, a particular individual can be very popular around the world but that's the individual not the art yeah you see mm -hmm. but yeah but i do wish that um i do wish that it was more popular <laughs> just so right. just so more people would be looking me up <laughs> yeah yeah uh it's 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 funny um and this is kind of a call back to, to what you said earlier about someone calling and saying hey do you teach aikido um mm -hmm. a lot of my emails for um for my juniors class anyway um yeah. they're like oh hey i want to i want to enroll my kid in karate i was like Okay, well, uh, I teach this, 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 and this, and we do this. Are you looking for karate in particular? You know, and it's it's just one of those things where it's just it's. Uh, I forgot where I was going with this actually. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, you you know this karate is still a gen look. Karate is still the generic term for the general public. Mm -hmm quite possibly because of the resurgence of Cobra Kai. Oh, def I would de right? definitely say that. There yeah. was a period where, it, but it never got to the same, it never got to the same, um, what, what, what's a uh, uh, tipping point, right? Kung Fu, there, there was a time where people would, would ask if you teach Kung Fu, yes, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that was probably people who were trying to be a little bit esoteric and different from asking about karate. But I think karate is still, to this day, the generic term, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't know this, but I wouldn't be surprised to learn that nobody calls a Brazilian jiu-jitsu school and asks if they teach karate. I wouldn't be surprised. To, to if I found out that that BJJ schools only field calls from people looking for BJJ, I wouldn't be surprised, <laughs> right? If I found right. that out, I don't know. I have, I have no, I have, I have no, um, I, I have no facts on on that. Uh, no reports, uh, statistics, or anything on that. But I wouldn't be surprised if I found that out. So, um, so the thing is, I mean, look. So here, so you know the technique for 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 answering for answering anything right any inquiry right whether it's a phone call or an email if somebody says um if, if somebody says you guys whether they write it or they they call and they ask you you guys teach karate what's the first thing out of your mouth uh hey thanks for reaching out that's the first thing out of my mouth but um okay that i needs, that needs refining okay uh, I don't say no, um, okay. but I do. I I immediately go into um, what I do offer. So I teach you can do. Okay. Don't even uh, do that. Okay. Okay. This is what, what would you do. suggest? This is what you do, right? Are you calling for yourself or someone else? Uh, That's what you do. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about the information call or the information email 
That's what it's okay. called in the industry. Well, it, I, wait, here's what I should tell. I don't know if that's what it's still called in the industry because I don't run a big school anymore. But even though I, I have private clients and my little group, I still treat any inquiry as if it's backed up by a school with 250 people in it. Right? <laughs> okay. okay, that's still how that's still how I behave. So the information call, even though it is thusly named, it's not about you giving out information. It's about you mm -hmm. getting information from and about the caller. Okay. So it's not about you, oh, we teach this, we teach that, we teach that. What if you say, right? So we teach Jeet Kune Do, Filipino martial arts, and the ghost and ghost elusive combat. And then mm -hmm. they say, oh, I was looking for Aikido. I heard that Aikido was the best. Thank you. Boom. Okay. They hang up. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, they heard that Aikido was the best. Who do you hear that from? My brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your brother-in-law? Is he an Aikido black belt? Because <laughs> if, if your brother-in-law, right? If your uh, if your brother-in-law is a high-ranking Aikido black belt, his ass should be teaching you, right? Why are you right. calling? <laughs> They're in a different state. That's right. Why. <laughs> right. Okay. So your brother-in-law, the Aikido black belt, should have should have done the research for you and told you call these Aikido schools in your town. Okay. Right. Not just mm -hmm. go karate near me. Right. On Google, <laughs> right. you see. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. so that's what it is. So the first question is: Are you calling for yourself or for someone else? Because okay. what if you start talking about this and this and this, and then they go, "Oh, I was calling for my five-year-old kid." Uh, that all that all those extra details aren't as important. Right, right. You see. Mm -hmm. So it's who. Are you, so who are you calling for? Right. Then mm -hmm. that is followed by. How did you hear about us? Okay. You see? Okay. Mm -hmm. That, how did you hear about us, right, can be followed by, tell me a little bit about what you're looking to get from martial art training. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Right. So that now, when you tell me what it is that you're looking to get from martial art training, I can tell you how what I do can give you all that that you're looking for. Uh, right? So now you appeal to the goals, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the next mm -hmm. thing. How long have you been interested in doing this? Right? Okay. Do you know where I'm so, going with this? Uh, appealing to urgency or... Somewhat, yes. How long have you been interested in doing this? Oh, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to get into it, but I never had the time or whatever. Okay. Well, is now a good time to get started? Mm -hmm. Now, if you say yes, mm -hmm. right? And I say, okay, so let's do this. Let's set up a time for you to come visit me right? Come check out the academy and see what it is that we have to offer, right? Come full of questions and in the face-to-face -face sit down, right? I'll do my best job to answer every question that you have. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just checking to see if, you know, because money and budget and Joe Biden economy and what have you, right? Wow. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that because believe mm -hmm. me, we live in the real world too, and I operate my school in the real world. So I know that people have concerns. So that's not really something that we can talk about on the phone, right? So mm -hmm. here's what I want to do, set up a time. So what works better for you? Morning, evening, bada boom, boom, set the appointment, done. Well, not done, because that's merely the beginning. Mm -hmm. You see? Because what's the mm -hmm. question? What happens next? Because what happens next is this. You set the appointment for two days from now. You call them the day before, right, to confirm. They go, yep, coming in. You call them three hours before to reconfirm. Yep, coming in. Appointment time, 
they don't show up. What's next? You've oh. got to have a procedure for that. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'll tell you something that happens, right? People make a decision to do something life changing, like joining a martial arts school. And the universe goes, oh, yeah? <laughs> You're going to do something to improve yourself? Let me send a few obstacles your way and see if you're really serious. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Russell, members of the general public fold at the slightest form of resistance. Mm -hmm. So the appointment is for today at six o'clock and the rain starts falling. Right? Can we there, are people, <laughs> there are people, right, who mm -hmm. will use that as an excuse to jump ship because they're scared, mm -hmm. you know. They don't have the, first of all, they're calling a martial arts school, which you have to give them credit for having the courage to do it because there's a mm -hmm. lot of people who have long time wanted to call a martial arts school or start martial art training and never did it. So you got to give them props, as they, as the cool kids say, for actually making the phone call. But uh -huh. you got to be aware that it's, it's for a lot of people. It's still a delicate situation. Okay. You can't think that that because they made the phone call, everything now is 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 smooth sailing because it probably will not be. Uh -huh. So there's there's a ton of what next um, questions that you have to that you have to um, ask. And then you got to formulate answers for what's next, mm -hmm. right? So I had, I, I don't know if I ever told you this, I had a 90 day follow-up system, an automated 90 day follow-up system for people who no showed, who no showed for an appointment. Yeah. Yeah. Running a martial arts school is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, no. Uh, to, to be, <laughs> Thankfully, I mean, if, if you're going to be good at it, mm -hmm. right? It's not the easiest thing in the world. You, right. you look. You think that getting you think that getting uh, an instructorship certificate from Dan and Asano, right? Now, now you, the rest of your life will be rosy. Hell no. No, 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 no. That's that's the least of your concerns. <laughs> uh, all right. That's where was I? <laughs> You think Jackie is more popular? So Jackie is more popular is where we were, and then we we branched off. Yeah, and then here we are. We're back on. I do that. Branches are important, you know. And the, ah, important. <laughs> even more important than the branches is the trunk, the delivery system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, sure. Between, and I'm, I'm not, between the roots and the branches is the trunk, and people never, never, ever mention the bloody trunk, the delivery system. No. They always want to go off on, oh, the branches, you guys are just interested in the branches or whatever, whatever. right? It, 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 um, who was it? Who was it that talked? Uh, Mark. I think it was, was it Mark? It was either Mark Adelaire or <laughs> Mark Adelaire, right? <laughs> who talked about the need for, for the branches and the leaves and the falling to the ground of the leaves and the whole mm -hmm. th that that's all that's part of the pro exactly exactly so when you want to be all erudite right and go oh you guys always interested in the branches man all you're revealing all you are revealing to the people who know is how much you do not know that's all mm -hmm. you're revealing right but then there are people who do not know right to them it's like whoa that's deep <laughs> <laughs> right wow that's that deep. pun yeah <laughs> you, you you've upped your pun game since i've left man oh no i still suck believe me oh i mean you know coming up from zero one is still <laughs> progress just saying, just saying. Shut up. i'm kidding i'm kidding
But uh, speaking of things you may not have heard of, mm -hmm. like uh, branches and whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, there's been some discussion over, um, I think, what, like three ranges or four ranges or something. Oh, um, yeah, I heard about that. Of combat. Mm -hmm. And personally, <laughs> right? Yeah, that, for me, for me, that's it's it's just the label, right? As far as understanding the art goes, it, it for me it's just the label. Um, you know, we know the notes say three. It's easy to look at it as three. If someone understands it as four, and they're able to perform under pressure and still, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the notes, the it says. But in the notes, it says, if if the guy is at at a long range, kick him in the shins. In that's what it says in the notes. If the guy's at a long range, kick him in the shins. Okay, so we should only kick at the shins at the long no, range. No, no. So, 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 <laughs> right? But now think about that. Or think about that. So what's being said, right? At a particular distance, probably the easiest and most direct thing to do is to kick the guy in the shins. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. At a particular mm -hmm. distance, it's probably the easiest thing to do is to just kick the guy. So there's a range at which kicking is probably the smartest thing to do. Sure. Now, if I'm moving closer, right? Well, the smartest thing, the smarter thing to do rather than kicking is probably to punch him. So that's like a punching range. At this range, it's probably smarter to punch him. If I move in a little bit closer, now it's probably smarter to try to tie him up because as we move in closer, he's got more tools he can use against me. Yes, I have more tools I can use against him. So maybe what I want to do is to trap him a little bit and tie up some of his tools, tie up some of his limbs while I hit him. So there's a particular distance. It's kind of like a range where trapping, you know, makes sense. You mm -hmm. see? There's an optimal range in yeah. which to trap. So, so as time goes by and people talk and ideas come into their minds, the terminology b becomes the vernacular. Mm -hmm. so then it's like the term kicking range or punching range or trapping range comes in to use. It does not come into use to replace anything. Mm -hmm. You see? Because people still mm -hmm. understand. People still yes. understand that. Yes. There is no, there is no, oh, wait, now, oh, now I'm confused. Nobody <laughs> was confused. No nobody, one. Nobody no was one. confused, right? Mm -hmm. And it made sense. It made sense to everybody. Okay? Mm -hmm. It made sense to everybody. Mm -hmm. Until, for whatever reason, the word range started to become, well, I don't know if it started to become confusing or if somebody became confused by it. And so the word aspects started to be used. The four mm -hmm. aspects of combat. Mm -hmm. Personally, I hated that term. So I never used it because you know okay. me, right? I'm yeah. Dwight Woods. I got to do what? things. I got to do things, you know the way the JKD Rebel does things, right? <laughs> but blame, blame my radical twin brother for that. Cause you know. Oh, absolutely. Right, yeah. me, I'm Mr. Easy going. I leave everything the way I found it. So- yeah, your surface I, level duck. <laughs> <laughs> so I never use the four aspects of combat. I call it four mm -hmm. skills. Cause yes. kicking is a skill. Punching is a skill. Trapping is a skill. Grappling is a skill. And I further qualified it by referring to it as the four skills of empty-handed combat. Mm -hmm. You see? Because you can't just say the four skills of combat is kicking, punching, trapping, and grappling. Because, no, mm -hmm. that ain't all there is. But in empty-handed combat, that's all there is. Yeah. Yes. So you've got to be particular, right, in the mm -hmm. way you, you, you speak, the way you describe things, if you're going mm -hmm. to be clear on what you're talking yes. about. Yes. Absolutely. I think. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I would say if anybody asked me. Well, yeah, I mean, being being but clear. They never ask me that about, kind of no, they never ask you that kind of stuff. I mean, being clear is huge, right? Because if 
if you take someone who's like very literal, right? Ensuring that you speak clearly and communicate clearly um, allows them or improves the odds of them understanding correctly, right? Yeah. And if they can understand uh, correctly, then they have a better chance of performing correctly, right? Yes. And that, again, that all comes down to the context. But um, yeah. So if we're going to continue looking at three versus four ranges, because <laughs> 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 um, I aim to misbehave. If, if we're concerned about how I was not there. If we're concerned about how Bruce Lee taught it and took notes about it, sure, you might want to stick with, oh, he talks about long, medium, short, or long, middle, short, whatever, whatever the vernacular is, right? Yeah, yeah. But if we're going to look at Jeet Do and just decide, you know what, let's simplify it. We could, could we not just whittle that down to two and even more so whittle that down to one, right? Because you have contact range and non-contact range, right? The range at which I could hit you or the range I can't or we can hit each other or we can't hit each other, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, physically, I should say, because if I do certain things with my body or if I faint at you, right? Oh, look at that, that looks cool. Um, if I do that, I'm hitting the mind now, right? I'm not necessarily hitting you, but I'm influencing the way you go, right? So if I'm looking at that non-contact range, that could also be a range of combat, right? But that's two ranges, not three. So it's, it's even more simple. But if we condense that even further, we could say it's just one range, fighting range whether or not I'm hitting you, but we are engaged in some sort of combat, right? Um, if we were to do that, do you think that would be more widely accepted than four ranges of combat? No. Okay, me neither. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, if, if, we, if we look at it, right, if, if we're constantly whittling down, you could say there's just one range, right? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you don't get the you you don't get like the nuances of it. Um, so if we're looking yeah. at the the three ranges, we're labeling it as three ranges. Now, now we're if we really look at it, we're just kind of nitpicking at that point, which I don't think is good for the image of the art or its practitioners, right? Well. Um, <laughs> Okay. Go, go ahead and chime in. Okay. I'm just going to mute myself while my kid talks to me. All right. But go ahead and talk to the camera. Um, so I don't know that, uh, that there's a need to whittle down to one range uh, because I don't see that necessarily making things clearer, right? There's just one range, fighting range, right? See, I, I think instead... Uh, a guideline that lends that that brings clarity to this is the concept of combat distances, mm -hmm. outer range, rim of fire, and in range. You see, I think that mm -hmm. if we marry that to long, middle, close quarter for skills, now we have. A comprehensive unit. We, now we have a comprehensive pro, without having without having to introduce new concepts or ideas of there's just one range, fighting range. Um, there's just because that's almost like say there's just, there's there's only one type of of fighting, fighting. <laughs> you see, there's only it's one. It's not range. untrue. Not untrue, range, but right? yeah. there's only one type right. of fighting, fighting. Well, yeah. I mean, it, look. If we want to deal, if you want to deal in absolute absolutes, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, there's only one type of fighting, and it's called fighting. Yes. Okay. Um, is that a clear? That might be a very simple explanation, but mm -hmm. is it clear? Does it no. deliver? all the information that a person would need mm -hmm. you see it, it doesn't not. it doesn't no 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 right two two ranges that's probably better than one <laughs> but, but a lot of people a lot of people are quite comfortable with the idea of long middle and close quarter aren't they they are 
They are, yeah. Yeah. So why don't we just build off of that, right? Build mm-hmm. as strongly as we can off of that. Mm-hmm. You see? I, I, I would I I would go in, in that direction. You know, it, th- this reminds me of, so one thing that we never bring up when we have this long, middle, and close quarter thing, we never bring up the six ranges of Kali. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> can, can you imagine if we were to do that? Right? And Why imagine? Up, Let's do it. Yeah, right? <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine if, if you were to introduce that um, that idea into the whole empty-handed thing, right? And talk about Friele and talk about to be to be, right? See, because it because right now in empty hands, La Code is commonly featured even in the grappling, rear naked mm-hmm. choke. Yep. Right. You see, but how often is that discussed in pure Jeet Kune Do? But it's discussed in Kali all the friggin' time, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe there's something that an, an investigation into Kali could enhance an aspect of your understanding of Jeet Kune Do. I don't know, but if you were to ask me, I would tell you. Well, my Kali is JKD Tinge. I would just put that out there. Yeah. You know, it, it, it would it would be really good if there were like a few videos on that topic, like your your colleague. Yeah, you but you know, know, but you know what? The, even even that topic. Here's here's what I discovered, right? And I discovered mm-hmm. this because of the influence of my favorite uh JKD, my favorite Canadian uh JKD senior and colleague Cass Magda. Right. Mm-hmm. The videos are well intentioned, and my idea was to, you know, put one out and and just build, try to build like like interest and momentum and what have you. Right. And Cass is mm-hmm. like, Dwight, just get to the point. <laughs> right. We're right. Diddling around, right? Man. Why? Why are you take? Why? Why are you take? What, what are you talking about? What what does that mean? My, why my colleague is JKD tinged, right? He's just like he's just like 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 virtually slapping me around. Is like, get to the point, man? You, we're we're talking Jeet Kune Do, right? Get to the point. Be direct. I'm like, damn, he's right. Yeah. But I'm still gonna do it my way. But he's There's right. A, uh, he's right. About getting to the point. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But see, but, but it, it, what? Go ahead. Oh no! Go ahead. No, you're cool. The the thing the thing is 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 that it's I wanted to show people the thinking, right? The mm-hmm. arc of thought that led to the result. Yes. Funny thing is, the result is actually something I got from him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the good. result is the result is something that I got from him in a in in a, a private session between me and him and Neil Colliff in um, St. Louis, Missouri in July of 1985. Wow. That's actually, the, yeah, the end result is actually something I got from him. It, wait, yeah, it's either, it's definitely Missouri, but if it mm-hmm. wasn't St. Louis 85, it was Baldwin 88. Hmm. I hope I got those dates right. I like to think that I do. Those are just labels, man. Yeah, I'm I know. Nobody, <laughs> nobody knows if I'm right or wrong unless they were there. <laughs> so I could oh, yeah. spit out any date I want. <laughs> if someone says you were wrong, you just ask them, were you there? Right? Because right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Oh, just to add on to that. I mean, in, in today's social media age, short snippets are, are good right they, they they you're more likely to watch um now the the ideal is less than a minute um but again if you're talking about going into the thought process of it right there's there, there's a lot to it yeah um they which have brings me to another point yes have, yes the, they snippets, do. the shorts they they, ha- mm-hmm. they they have a place don't get me wrong however mm-hmm. in the long run 
in the final analysis, here's what we're doing. I'm going to paraphrase one of my favorite movies of all time, right? Broadcast news. What social media does ultimately and is damaging, it mm -hmm. emphasizes flash over substance. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. So right. apparently the game is to use the shorts, the reels, and um, uh, uh, attract traffic to the longer stuff. Mm -hmm. Right? So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's playing the game. If the mm -hmm. game is the short dynamic stuff do that but mm -hmm. make sure that they can click to go to the longer stuff mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's a marketing principle I, I i i can i could i could break that down for you in, in in terms of of marketing in like a couple a couple of different ways but that's a that's a different conversation for another time yeah Right. Um, yeah. but what I was getting to was um something that um because what were we talking about? Oh, because we're talking about the thought we're talking about the thought process, right? And you know that's there's there's a lot that goes into that, and I think I'm, I'm sure other people say it too, but um the one that stands out in in my head most who said it is a uh, is Chris Canton. He's like, simple is not easy. Right, mm -hmm. and again, I'm sure I'm sure many people say that. Mm -hmm. And then something that uh, Sifu Andy had said in Seattle this year was that um, within simplicity uh, lies a lot of intricacy. And if we continue, again, you're looking at like let's say the straight lead, right? Oh, that's no, oh, that's a that's a lead straight punch, right? Oh, very simple. But there's a lot that can go into it. You're looking at body mechanics. You're looking at alignment. You're looking at your power line. You could take it from an offensive standpoint or a counter offensive standpoint. Oh, there, there we go, go. Right? Yeah. You, could, you could you could look at um what is it? Uh, sliding leverage, right? There there's so many things you can do. But I'm not overcomplicating the straight lead. I'm just honing that skill, right? And right. that's just what your your JKD your your JKD tinged Kali video conversation just brought into my mind. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to put that out there so people know. I also am kind of a smart noggin. Anyway. Um, <laughs> You're one of the good ones. <laughs> I'm one, yeah, yes, there we go. My students uh, my students are in the best of hands. Oh, I'm out of focus. Am I good? I think I'm good. All right. Um, now, speaking of the, the straight lead, and I have, I've got about 15 minutes here. So okay. um, straight lead, you know, we're, again, we're, we're, I'm going to touch back on what we talked about in, in May as far as going power side forward, right? We, mm -hmm. we all essentially agree that it's good to be balanced. Um, uh, and the argument for trying to be power side forward more often than not is you're talking about coordination and fractions of a second between life and death and the the realism and truth and combat and its thusness and it, whatever, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Now, if if I did take that, right? Okay, my right side may be more coordinated because I'm a right-handed person. Um, if we're looking at that as being more coordinated and being like such a great asset, are we not also considering that that left hand is a liability and now if I switch to left lead, right, and I need those fractions of a second, because I've preferred my right lead so much, now is, is, is my left lead not more of a liability now because I haven't uh, put the time in to make it as proficient? Yeah, but you just answered your question, of course. If yeah. you emphasize power side forward, what's your other side? What's the opposite of power? Weak. Right. Weak or That's weakness. Bullshit. No. Right. It's it's stupid to do that. It's mm -hmm. stupid to do that. Right? Mm -hmm. So what's so if by putting my right side for my natural uh, my 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 natural side, right? Mm -hmm. I enhance it. What happens if I work this? Don't I enhance that too? You do. Okay. Very much so. Yeah. So I train both. Mm -hmm. Okay, I train both. No. It's as simple as that. If yep. if the power side thing, right? Okay, let me ask you this. The Russian 
uh, Spetsnaz, right? Mm -hmm. Do have they discovered stuff about military training that's probably similar to what Navy SEALs or Green Beret or is that right? And then what what's what's the what's the um, elite military in um, in in the UK SAS or something? I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. Do you think that if we were to compare what these people have discovered in different parts of the world, but what they have discovered in terms of elite combat training, you think there'll be vast differences or similarities? What do you think? Similarities. Yeah. So if this power side forward is so crucial, is so indispensable, why mm -hmm. haven't the combat athletes discovered it to a high degree. Why is a greater percentage of combat athletes still doing the orthodox? If don't you think that they would have that they would have they would have discovered something right about this power mm -hmm. side forward? Now I'm not saying that because on record there's a bunch of them that have adopted the idea so right there's a bunch of them okay but it's not a huge percentage right right so so has it been proven beyond the shadow of a doubt right that power mm -hmm. side forward magically does these wondrous things for you i venture to say it has not been proven um universally doesn't mm -hmm. mean that it's therefore a principle i'm not saying so therefore you throw it out no 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 i'm in favor of training both sides now mm -hmm. i know there are people who say oh when you say you're in favor of training both sides you're just trying to give yourself an excuse for putting your yeah. power side back i've well, seen that argument well i mean you know look when I go to the gym, right? No, <laughs> no. You know what? Sorry. How about this? I'm just gonna do pull-ups, all right? On my power with my power arm. I'm just gonna do bicep curl, right? On my power arm. Why? Because power side forward is so crucial. It's so important, right? I got this one back here because it has a longer distance to travel it will naturally or normally have power. That's not true. It still has to be trained. And mm -hmm. I discovered that optimal training for this side is to put it up front. But I can't put this one up front and get, get <laughs> this one some optimal training as well. So I go to the gym and I just work one arm. I don't ever work both arms. But that's not Jeet Kune Do, Dwight. We're talking about combat. Right. Yeah, yeah. we're not talking. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, hey. You know what? <laughs> I, you're right. If you look at Bruce Lee's training regimen, you realize that he did what? He trained the right side in the gym. Never trained his left side. Yeah. You know, you can't find pictures of Bruce Lee. You can't find pictures of Bruce Lee, right? Curling the bar with both arms. It doesn't exist. You can't find a picture of Bruce Lee hanging with using both arms. It's just one arm. Right? If you look at Bruce Lee's left forearm development, <laughs> right? You'll it's notice. Yeah, right? His right, his right forearm is like this big. Mm -hmm. And his left forearm is like this big. Right? Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah, sure it is. Yeah, Come absolutely. On. That's why you only see him do those these uh the two finger push-ups with his right arm. But you know, <laughs> that 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 one's that one is true. Oh. <laughs> of course. But again, that's that's your yeah. because they're yeah. But mm -hmm. the thumb push-ups are with both arms. They are, yeah. So of course, Bruce Lee trained his left side, mm -hmm. right? So if I say I train my left side, mm -hmm. but I subscribe 
I subscribe to the guideline of power side forward, but I train both. I'm violating some kind of Bruce Lee rule. Bruce Lee obviously trained both, mm -hmm. but he espoused power side forward. But there's no way that Bruce Lee didn't train his left arm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am I espouse power side forward, but I train my left arm as well. What am I doing that's different from what Bruce Lee did? Nothing. Right? You don't see you don't see any pictures of Bruce Lee in left lead. So therefore, he never did it. Mm -hmm. Because we can't find any pictures of it. So that's how we know he never did it. <laughs> A lack of proof is not proof, right? <laughs> so. All right. That's a that's a fair amount of misbehaving, I would say. Ah. <laughs> um, all right, quick. Okay, I, I, I have up. seven minutes, so quick. Okay. Uh, some quick questions here. Ah, damn. Uh, no, 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 not not like. Oh, uh, what's the first rocket, thing that comes to your mind fire. when you say Apple? Yeah, no, I no, suck no. At, I suck at that. Oh my god. I, I'll so tell you a quick story. I was in. I was in. I think I was in high school. And I, I decided to play this game, right? And the person was like, all right, you ready? I was like, yeah, I'm ready. And she was like, Apple. I was like, uh, what did I say? Oh, I said blue. She's like, Apple. I was like, blue. And I was like, what the fuck? Or, sorry. I was just like, that's definitely, I mean, maybe it was the first thing that came to my mind, but there's like zero connection there. Right? <laughs> um, so no, I'm not a fan of those either. They're a good exercise, but yeah. uh, that's yeah. not what we're doing today. Yeah, at least not right now. You know, I, yeah. I, I, um, no, my brain. I, I don't think my brain works that way. I mean, I because I could find a connection between Apple and Blue, letter A, letter B. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> there right. you go. Right. There you go. See, that's my excuse now, or that's my reasoning. Excuse me. Okay. All right. So, what do you think Jeet Kune Do practitioners need to do to ensure that the art just doesn't survive, but it thrives? That goes back to the whole um, popularity, what's, what's popularity, and what's wrong with it, and what they need to whatever, whatever, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, individual basis. That's all. We're, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a strength in numbers thing, I mm -hmm. think. And 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 that is because the idea of the individual is built in. It's built in to Jeet Kune Do. So mm -hmm. they gotta be the best versions of themselves that they can be. And I don't care what your lineage is and what what your thoughts are versus somebody else's thoughts, whatever. Do your thing, just be impeccable in the thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm impeccable at incorporating sashes into my my, my classes. They're very but, they're um, very good looking sashes. They're, they're, they're quite pretty. Um, <laughs> and they act as back support, that, don't they? They, if you tie it tight enough. Now, if they're a little yeah. loose, yeah. Okay. And for the record, we don't wear them for every class. I use them for special occasions. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> again, I'm not defending myself. <laughs> That's not what we're here for. <laughs> All right. Um, who would you like to see on the Jeet Kune Do dialogues? Oh, I do have a misbehaving question. Okay, go. Can I can I shoot that one first? Yeah. Who don't you want to see on the Jeet Kune Do dialogues? Uh, I, I would, I'm joking. Answer. I'm joking. I, I'm I joking. Would never, I, I would never answer that in public. All right. Text me, text me. Okay. And then I'll answer that in public for you. Okay. Um, I won't, I won't. Who would I like yes. to see? Who would yes. I like to see? It could be a repeat performance. Okay. Bill Sang, yes. Blaze Loom, Bob Carver, Bob, uh, Duba, Duba, Jlin, Rob, Bob, Eg Egbrecht, Brenda King, Brian Fay. Cass Magda, Chad Stahelski, Charles Chai, Chris Chris Brown. No, Chris is Chris, no, yeah, Chris Brown, Clay Johnson, uh, Cookie Vasiliu, Craig Stanton, Dale Frank, Damon Carroll, Dan Anasano, Dane Junod, uh, Daniel O'Hara, Daniel Sullivan, Darren's been here, David Hines, David Onuma, Dennis Blue, Dickie Harrell, Don Garen, Drake Rich, Richie, Dwight Wakabayashi, Eric Boucher, Eric Charles, Eric Smith, Fran Joseph, 
Francis Fong, Frank Cucci, Freddie Jin, George Fitzgerald, George Johnston, Glenn Yi, uh, Gunner's been here, Jack McVickers, James <laughs> Hunden, Jason Hawkins, Jason Wingle, uh, JB Jager, Jeff Amada, Jeff Jones, Jeremy Lynch, um, Joaquin Almeria, uh, Joe Craig, Joe Purcell, Joel Clark, John J.D. Daniels, John Maidman, John Rister, uh, Julian from AC Combatives, uh, Cade Marsh, oh. um, Kelly Warden, Lauren, Mar Lauren Mary Kim, LaVon Martin, Lauren Bookbinder, Mark McFan, Mark DeCascos, Mateo De Los Reyes, uh, Michael uh, Zapla, uh, Mike Krivka, Mike Rutter, Nathan Maramon, Nick Palma, Nick Sakulas, Nino Pila, uh, the New Breed Team, Pat O'Malley, um, um, Patrick Chan, um, Patrick Trey, Patrick Strong, but I'm not sure if he, did he pass away, Patrick, Pat Strong? I don't know. Uh, I didn't think so, but now that you ask, okay. like, right. it okay. sounds uh, like. Paul Bax, Paul Lewis, Philip Jolinas, Ralph Mitchell, Rich Citrone, uh, Robert Kerbo, Rodney Hitchcock, Roger Lurie, um, S. Kai Lee, um, Scott Han, Scott Han has a minute on, Scott Han, Steve Brom, Steve Golden, Stephen Russell, Terry Tom, Terry Barnett, Todd Garrison, Tom Jones, Tommy Gong, um, Tony Ligorio, uh, Sayoshi uh, Abe, Victor okay. Young, Vincent uh, Gior Giordano, Yuri Nakamura, uh, Johnny Williams. Uh, that's my list. Okay. I was, I was, I was waiting for Sayoshi on there. I thought he'd be at the top, but... Uh... Well, this, anyway, this did is you done, did you say it's, 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 that's done alphabetically? It's done alphabetically. That's why. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's why Dan uh, and is not at the top because his name starts with D. Right. Yeah. Um, did you did you say Rick Tucci or no? Uh, no, I didn't. I heard Frank. I think Frank Cucci. Yes. Cucci. Yeah. Sorry. But I didn't say no because he, 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 um, probably because as far as I know, Rick retired from martial art. Yeah, I believe he's right. I mean, you you were speaking with Mike Wolf the other the other week. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I remember watching. I, I remember watching see Rick with with the two mics on his on his YouTube channel. That was great. That was, I, I, if, if he was ever on, yeah, I, I'd love that. No, I mean, um, I can, I can you, you know me, right? I can, I can always uh -huh. reach out. And then Mike Lee, I should add to this list because he's off to right. See, so here's the thing, right? So I have all those people, and they're part of my dream, one hundred, right? Uh -huh. There's still sure. more. Absolutely, there's still more. Uh -huh. Okay, so. It's been four years of the Jeet Kune Do dialogues, but there's no way that I'm done. I'm not done. I'm mm -hmm. never going to be done, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody who's been talk been, about too. Everybody who's been on can come back on, right? Mm -hmm. People who have not yet been on, they could also come back on. So when, mm -hmm. when, when are we going to be done? No, we're never going to be done. The mm -hmm. art's never going to be done, right? So mm -hmm. I'm. And there, so how can we I, do that? I have Patrick Chan, right? But there's Alex oh. Chan. There, there's, there's, um, there's, um, 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 Adam Chan, who you know will mm -hmm. not come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I hope, I hope that one day, I hope that one day, right? The Jeet Kune Do dialogues is as famous as the Joe Rogan show, right? Joe and Rogan people Rogan want to, and people want to come on. You know, they're like, yeah. oh, right? It'll so boost me if i get on dwight's show right so let me do it yeah. <laughs> let me let me that's, answer let me answer his email from four years ago that's the only reason i'm on here to get exposure hey, um, man. <laughs> no it's not it's not whatever, i enjoy talking to you whatever um, whatever whatever it takes uh uh shoot oh what i was gonna say um if and i'm not putting them on blast i am not but if you ever do get Bill Sang or Paul Bax on, I'm sure it'll be an interesting episode. Oh yeah, you should you should get them on at the same time. Just <laughs> I'm joking. That would I be. Like, I feel like I'm being set up. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, not yeah. not like a not like a planned setup. Like I I would just imagine that would go off the rails. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> don't um don't yeah. take that one seriously. But oh, okay. I, I would. Like I, I would yeah, I would. But yes, them on individually. Yeah. I mean, basically anyone on that list on. But uh, yeah, I I, I yeah I had I had asked Bill a long long time ago, but I, as far as I know, he's he's not that. He's anymore. a hard no. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was. I I went to. <laughs> I think I sent you the picture, and I know we texted you that following morning. But I was when I was in Seattle in 2020, uh -huh. and we went to that first. Um, the, the I'm gonna call it the conference dinner. Um, there was a birthday cake for Seung Taki. It wasn't really his birthday. Um, it was like two days before, but we we were there, and we we had um, we had assigned seating. Right. Mm -hmm. I sat down, and the next to me it said Bill saying, and I was like. I know that name. Uh, oh, it's been on Facebook, and and because one of the one of the things he had posted on the uh, I Love Jikundo page, it was actually a comment, but I I found it really uh, beneficial. But I also know he's he's a character, right? So I was like, uh oh, I wonder how tonight's gonna go. <laughs> and then he sat you sat down, and we just started talking, and he he learned, uh, you know, I, I had trained with you previously. And he's like, oh, you're friends with Dwight? All right, let's take a picture. And then you can tell him you're sitting next to the elusive German. <laughs> I was like, all right. So we, we, we took the picture, and then I sent it to you. I was like, hey, look who I'm sitting next to. And then, of course, the next day, Bill was just like, oh, we had an amazing dialogue regarding Jeet Kune Do, one of those you had to be there moments. <laughs> He's a he's, he's a he's a fun guy. I, I like Bill a lot. He's yeah, a, I'm sure he's he is. Guy. I'm sure he is. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's um, like, it, you know that was that was during what I'll call it my my Bill and Bob days. You know when Bob yeah. Sanders was. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, but Bob Bob rubbed a lot of people the the, the wrong way, but he did. That 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 kind of stuff doesn't I, doesn't have that effect on me. You're who you are, right? You know, yeah, you're who sure, you are. Sure. So do what you do. Now, if I think I need to call you out on something, I'm going to call you out on it. But it's Absolutely. not like I'm gonna call you out on this and and you know never this or whatever man. Let people say what it is that they want to say, and if they yeah. want to come on the show and say what it is that they want to say, okay, come, right? Yeah, I'll do my then, best. I'll do my best to interview, you, and then people will see what they see, and they'll make their own decisions. So, yeah, and you know, I, uh, I've how many times was Bob Landers on? Two or three. Two, two, oh, three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've I, I seen at least two, and I yeah. they're they're good, you know. Like there's he's he rubs people. He he excuse me. He may rub some people the wrong way, mm -hmm. and um, you you can certainly see why. But yeah. I mean, if, if we're talking about knowledge, right? I I highly encourage anyone, regardless of lineage, to come onto the show and share that. Not there's we don't know what we don't know. It's the same for everybody. We don't know what we don't know. Right. Yeah. And if there are things that can have us reconsider our stance or things for us to like, oh, I've never done that. Let me put in the work and see how that feels for me. I, can, I shouldn't just dismiss something because I've never done it. Yeah. Right. And again, to that, that attribute thing with Bruce Lee. Well, he put in a lot of work. Let's put in the work first and then say, all right, maybe well, not necessarily all the reps, but, you know, we have to recognize a certain amount of work was put in. And that that should be part of the journey. Right. Just because I don't like. Uh, this is just a for instance, like just because I don't like Pakda, right? Doesn't mean I don't put in the work to to make it effective, right? It's I, I still put in the work, and then I could decide, hmm, no, not for me. But I'll tell you right now, it is for me, and I love it, and so should you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, how can people reach you? <laughs> uh, yeah, you tune in at six p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, on Facebook and and 6 p.m. on Friday on Facebook and you email JKD Rebel and you look up Dwight Woods on Facebook. Yeah, Dwight Woods and soon on Dwight. TikTok and Snapchat. Yeah, <laughs> and, and OnlyFans and um, whatever you, else there you, is out there. You can do OnlyFans, right? But the people that subscribe get like that insider Jeet Kune Do knowledge. Oh, that's coming. Bam. But it's not coming. It's not coming on. Uh, it's not coming on, on OnlyFans. I won't do that. But it's coming. Hey, I mean, why why limit yourself, man? Yeah. You're, you're a true chicken do man. Yeah. Go out. <laughs> I'm the plan. I'm playing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it'll it'll be it'll be my version of OnlyFans. But yeah, it's coming. I I mean, I am literally I'm literally working on it. I was on the bus 
um, this week, the bus and the train this week, mm -hmm. literally put in the pieces together. So right. I'll just tease people with that, uh, with that bit of inside baseball. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's, I actually made it through all the questions that time. That's it for you? Yeah, I actually made it through. Yeah. Okay. I had like little side notes for me to, to like mention. Um, all right. Uh, if it had come up, but uh, no, those were, I got through everything I wanted to get through. So, boom. Right. So, now, um, I, I, I don't have my notes in front of me because, mm -hmm. because, you know, because, because I go, oh, I don't have to prepare anything because Russell's going to ask all the questions. So I don't even pull up notes or what have you, but I think next, <laughs> um, next, next week, um, um, if you want, Kurt, sorry, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just. I have to get this text out <laughs> because okay. you know I'm late again. <laughs> okay, all right. No, so no, I'll it's fine. Ask. It's fine. They okay. they told me they're running late, so okay. I so so next next week should be. Uh, I think it's uh, Kurt Cornwell is on next week. I think great dude, great yeah. dude. And then um, and then all the NKG after guys. After him, are. Ed Stahl, Ed Ed Stahl will be back. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what's that's what's coming up, and then of course next Wednesday, I'll be on for the I Love Jeet Kune Do broadcast. So thanks again for doing this, Russell. Um, you are very well. Thank you for having me on. If 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 you're late, you know, blame it all on me. Tell yeah, me. I, I will. I'll just refer them to the last episode we were on together and be like, yeah. he says right here. I'm, Tell us. You're you're in the best of hands. I'm one of the good ones. <laughs> Don't worry about me ever being late. It's worth it, right? And Tell yeah. them it was all my fault, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. I'll, I'll tell them that, but I'll I'll also, you know, laugh and joke so they'll know it's it's me being a Filipino and not being able to manage my time. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you all have that in common with us Islanders, so you know. Us you it's an Islander thing. It's got to be an Islander a thing. Whatever you know, it is there what it go. is. Man. Again, right. calm on the top and just the bottom. We're we're friends. Okay. All right. Take it easy, man. All Thanks right. again. All right. You too. Thank you so, so much. No problem, man. All right, folks. That was was it two two three? No, two two six. Episode two two six. So, um, I have comments turned off while while I do this. So, um, I will later tonight. Probably not later tonight. It's 8.30. People like me have to go to bed in two hours. Um, so maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll go through the comments and reply to anything if I need to. Um, you know, follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods, Instagram, Dwight D. Woods, and uh, check in Wednesdays at 6 p.m., the I Love Jeet Kune broadcast, Fridays at 6 p.m., the Jeet Kune dialogues. So until the next episode, you guys chill. Um, I should do I should do the the self serving stuff. Remember that at PayPal.me slash Unified MA Miami is the Jeet Kune Do Journey Volume One, and uh, that's it. I'm out, man. That stuff to do all all weekend long, right? So you guys take care of yourselves. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. Talk soon.